Hey True Pro, welcome back to the Think Tank. This month we are talking about the subtalar joint. So the subtalar joint is in the foot, the ankle obviously, between the calcaneus, the big heel bone, and the talus, which sits right under the tibia. And this is an incredibly important joint in the body. The talus does not have any muscle or ligament attachments to it, pretty interesting, but we really have to make sure that there's movement happening here. And Lynn might even say it's one of the most important joints in the body. Absolutely. In fact, most of the time, this is one thing I end up working with just about everybody at the end of the session is just making sure it's gliding properly because if the subtalar joint's not working, knee function, hip function, spinal function, shoulder function, nothing's going to work right. It's very important. Yeah, so we're going to work on what that movement actually is. And then in the skills lab, Lynn's going to go even deeper with you and get in there and do some hands-on work. So we could think about you know, three main reasons that we have to have movement in this joint. One is to keep the leg upright, really, like when we're going through our gait and walking, there has to be movement in order to do that. Also for force absorption, so the foot is an incredible force absorption. There are a few different models that you could look at for understanding that in the foot, but none of them work without movement in the subtalar joint. And then thirdly is so the foot can move from it, it kind of is like a chameleon and switches quickly between two different modes. One mode we could call the foundation mode, when we're really putting weight down into it, we are in this mode of dorsiflexion, and then the other mode could be called the lever mode. So that's what allows our foot to actually propel us forward, and in that mode it needs to be a little bit more rigid and narrow. Foundation mode, it needs to be wide and flat. So the subtalar joint is a big part of the foot being able to transition between those two modes. The foundation mode where it's wide and flatter and the lever mode where it kind of spirals and gets a little bit more rigid and narrow. So before we stand up and feel the motion in there, we'll just take a quick look at our foot. So one thing we would notice quickly if we look at this model, um, if we were to take a sponge here and put it along the calcaneus in the back, or like this on my foot, we could see that the hind part of the foot, the back part of the foot, is more vertical. Yeah, and the front part is more horizontal. And so the foot is essentially a twisted plate. And we're going to look at what happens uh, to have a transition between a more spiraled position and then a flatter, wider position. The subtalar joint is a big part of that motion happening in the foot. Mm -hmm. And do you want to add something? Yeah, and one, one thing also that's really unique about the subtalar joint is it's one of the few, if it's maybe the only one joint that I know that's actually a torque converter. So as you take your foot into inversion and eversion back and forth, it causes the rotation in the upper parts of the body. So it's a really awesome, awesome part of the body. So as it does those two functions, you know, that Ann was talking about, when we start taking it sideways, just take your feet back and forth. If you do them both to the same side and just move my feet side to side, that tarp starts some rotation, some transverse plane in the rest of the body. So all of you golfers can now suddenly say, Wow, if my subtalar joint can't invert and evert very well, I'm not going to be able to hit a ball, or throw a football, or catch a football, or run fast. Yeah. Pretty important for everything. Yeah. So let's find it. So if you go down to your foot here, always helpful just to sort of feel around. If you need a foot model, grab that, or you can look it up. If you go right in front and you plantar flex um, in front of the malleoli there, you will feel the corners of the talus come forward. Can we feel that? And then if we go behind the malleoli and go into a dorsiflexion, you will feel the back of the talus come back, especially on the uh, medial side. You'll feel it more. So that's the talus and it kind of has a dome top. The tibia is gliding over the dome of the talus. And then we want, of course, the calcaneus. So we have the big heel bone here. We could grab around that. Um, interesting feature to notice is here on the medial side of the calcaneus, we have sort of what looks like a balcony that the talus is gliding over. And you can actually find that if you can palpate deep enough. 
And so what we want to do before we stand up is just take the heel bone, the calcaneus, and give it a good wiggle so we could adduct and adduct, yeah? That would be inverted and everted. Oh, sorry. I can't see what she's doing from here. Sorry. So we will, we'll take the calcaneus and we could just swing it around, so adduct and adduct it. And you can notice when we adduct it, if we were to also uh, invert the calcaneus, we'd go a little bit farther, right? So if we combine that adduction with some inversion, we get a little bit farther, and that's essentially our supination. And the same thing if we go out and we abduct and also evert it a bit, we get a little bit farther, and that's our foundation mode, our pronation. So right now we're kind of gliding the calcaneus under the talus, and we want to feel what that's like when we're standing up. First, let's just grab the forefront, forefoot and do some spiral motion. So we're taking the calcaneus out and bringing the forefoot in, moving the foot through that whole spiral that it does. And this is really at the transverse arch there. Okay. And the fun part of that, you guys notice the way we were designed, if we kind of take the calcaneus out in push, our foot gets pretty rigid, and when we bring it in, it gets pretty loose, right? So that's what happens as we're going through our gait. Our foot has to be all loosey-goosey to load throw, but as you go through, it becomes rigid so we can push off. Yeah. So that's why people that have subtalar joint problems, everything can't pronate and lie down, they don't can't run faster at proper support for the foot. Yeah. So now I'm standing. We just did a little movement in that joint with the right foot, um, but you would even notice a difference probably now between the feeling of your two yeah. foot actually getting some movement in the joint there. So you'll want to go ahead and do the other foot. But we're going to start taking a look at what movement is happening. 